Welcome to RVing Today TV. We start off this week with Jeff Johnston as he gives us an example of how RVs are so instrumental in allowing folks to enjoy their hobbies and pastimes. Today, Jeff catches up with the Jolly Jeepers group at their Tillamook, Oregon rally. Then, even if you currently have solar power on your trailer or motorhome, eventually you'll want or need more power. This is what happened to Michelle Fontaine. She started boondocking and working a lot more from her trailer, so with some help from Go Power, we'll see how she increased her solar power capacity. Later in the show, Jeff Johnson takes us on a quick stop to the in-town campground in Nevada City, California, and checks out this great location and what it has to offer. Of course, what's camping without preparing some great outdoor meals? Today, we bring back Kate Dunbar, the campground gourmet, to show us this quick, delicious one-pan recipe for Mediterranean chicken. Warning, when you make this dish, make plenty because everyone will want seconds. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. An RV is a wonderful device that helps you enjoy your hobby. Hi, I'm Jeff Johnston for RVing Today. We're in the Tillamook State Forest just outside of Tillamook, Oregon at the Portland Jolly Jeepers Back to Basics Rally. The place is full of RVs and we're gonna show you what these guys do with their RVs. It helps them come out here and enjoy the back roads and the, and the hospitality of the Jolly Jeepers. And in the interest of full disclosure, I was once a Jolly Jeeper member myself. The Jolly Jeepers Back to Basics Rally is a long-running annual event that combines comfortable camping and scenic four-wheel drive trail riding in the Tillamook Forest area of Western Oregon. Many of the participants started with tents and have graduated to RVs of all kinds. A look around the campground reveals it resembles an RV park as much as a Jeep trail ride event. We asked around among the participants to collect some opinions on how using their RVs improves their enjoyment of the event. Absolutely, absolutely. I can come back to my ride. It has a shower, it has a toilet, it has AC. It has everything you need just like a home. And make, makes it nice and easy, particularly if you have kids that I can just stick them in the bathtub. This, this is our 2011 16 foot scamp and we chose the scamp because it's easy to care for and it it's also can be towed behind our Jeep or other vehicles. It's about 2200 pounds, it has a bathroom, has a bed, it has a kitchen, um, all the amenities of a large uh, RV but it's very small and it's very convenient to take pretty much anywhere we want to go, uh, hiking or jeeping or you know, all the outdoor adventures. So the motorhome allows us to get out and explore the world in a little bit more of a glamping fashion. Um, I'm not much of a tent person, so this is definitely more my speed, especially with the hot water and the Corian countertops and everything else. So it's, it's really nice to have our second home with the creature comforts that we're used to on the roadway with us, going to all the little Jeep events. The, the best thing about uh, our uh, jeeping experience is that when we come back to camp, we have a comfortable place to stay. Uh, beds are comfortable, hot shower, hot meal, and then uh, we can rest and do it up again tomorrow. So, all good. The rally includes a wonderful steak dinner prepared by the club and likewise breakfast to get the participants off on the right foot. The fun begins when you hit the trail in your favorite four-wheel drive rig. The legal recreational driving trails are maintained by the Forest Service and available to the public. Not all Jeep trail rides go as planned. Okay, so I was driving my uh, Jeep Wrangler up the trail, following a few other people up the trail. Um, we were coming up on a rock garden, and um, my axle really wasn't strong enough to be climbing up said rock garden. Um, and my axle broke, 
which means this whole wheel wanted to walk its way out. So we weren't going to be able to make it off the trail um, unless we had another axle to put in it, and we didn't. So um, this log was just laying there a couple feet from us. Um, our trail leaders, um, Ron and Grant, uh, had these straps and a rope, and we strapped the log in to the step and to the bumper to keep the wheel uh, from falling out. Um, so that it would freely roll and we just slowly um, drove it back to a road where we were met by a trailer and they picked us up and brought us back to camp. And it worked! <laughs> when the trail ride is over, you have your comfortable RV waiting back in camp. That's the way to go. For more information about the Back to Basics Rally, log on to our website at rvingtoday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet AquaMax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Bedford.com. Want more RVing Today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Hi, this is Michelle Fontaine for RVing Today TV. I'm up on my RV roof, admiring my brand new GoPower 190 watt solar panels. That's what today's story is about. The research, planning, and installation of this amazing solar system by GoPower. So let's start with a conversation I had with Jake at GoPower. Hi, Jake. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Great, great. Jake handles customer service calls at GoPower, and it's so nice to be able to get a human being on the phone for some really nice, clear answers. I used your tools on gpelectric.com. Mm -hmm. Excellent solar calculator, lots of tools there to help us out. And I got a good feel for how I use dry camping. In my personal case, it's mostly fall winter because I'm in Arizona and that's the perfect time to go dry camping in, in the deserts we have around here. So two, three days at a time is, is my style of dry camping. And okay. the last time I went out, honestly, I was watching the little control panel and the green lights that tell you how much you've got left. My family and I are playing dominoes. I, I had to watch that green power light because I didn't want the lights to go out. So, so, oh no. So I came back from there and I said, I've got to contact my our partners at GoPower and see how I can upgrade what I currently have. I have a 100 amp lithium battery, okay. a 2000 watt converter. Inverter to inverter. AC, yes. See, see how much I need you? <laughs> and I have a portable plug in the side, 130 watt portable setup. Like a portable panel. Portable panel, yes. I'd like to actually sit and watch a movie from my DVD and TV. So that's like maybe three hours on the DVD player, three hours on the TV. I'd love to use my Keurig coffee maker. All right. And because I film for RVing Today TV, I need to be able to charge a camera battery and eight AA batteries whenever I need to. For, for your particular needs, um, I would say Solar Elite Kit is 380 watts of solar. That is two 190 watt panels, um, a 30 amp solar controller to regulate that power, a 2000 watt IC unit, so that's an inverter charger. That's going to 
produce 2,000 watts of AC power, as well as have a 100, 100 amp battery charger built in. You also get the DC install kit and all the cabling to install these, this system on your coach. Now we knew what the Go Power project looked like. I headed to my Massachusetts summer base and the Go Power equipment was delivered. Next, we needed to identify the mobile tech who was going to install the car. Our friend, Bob Zagami, who is the executive director of the New England RV Dealers Association, recommended Ryan Hadley of Trick RV Mobile Systems. But what's it going to do when it's all done? What is she going to be able to do off the grid? She's going to be able to run all of her appliances, except for the air conditioner inside the unit. Um, the air conditioner is just too much of a draw. Uh, it'll kill the batteries real quick. So and that's but, pretty standard, no matter yeah, how much. Yeah, that's pretty you've got. standard. Yep, yeah. yep. Other than that, her fridge, everything will be all her 110 stuff will be able to run while she's off the grid. We go to campgrounds, fix your camper. We go to your house if you don't want to bring it to the dealership. Don't want to wait for an, uh, wait a day and bring it in there and tow it and everything. We come right to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, we offer um, all of our services, uh, including all the appliances, maintenance, uh, wheel bearings, everything, everything on a camper. The uh, only thing we don't do is the engine and uh, drivetrain side. Now that our Go Power Solar install project is underway, let's take a look around King's Family Campground, the place I'm calling home this summer and fall. King's Family Campground is located in Sutton, Massachusetts, in Worcester County, on Manchog Pond. It has 1,200 feet of waterfront with a 20-slip powerboat marina and a small fishing dock. Most sites are seasonal, but there are a number of transient sites as well. And these sites are larger than sites at most campgrounds. Many of the happy campers I've met have been here for many years. We are visiting with Kara and Bill Castingway. Kara and Bill are seasonal campers, so I think the nice thing about a seasonal situation is you really get to know everybody. Yeah, and it is a community. It's a community here. And the dogs all know the other dogs. <laughs> you can learn more about this campground at kingsfamilycampground.com. And now, let's get back to our installation. She's going to have a uh, standalone inverter converter. Two solar panels on the roof, hardwiring the inverter right into her 30 amp uh, breaker so that she'll run all the appliances right off the inverter. And you got help earlier this morning from the Go Power customer service. They were pretty yep, good, huh? they answered a few questions we had about uh, which way we decided to wire this one and they Go Power, they answered the phone right away and they said if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to call us. So they were definitely a great help. So that's how the installation happened. Now that I'm very comfortably able to go off grid, I'll be creating some stories in the Arizona deserts this winter. So stay tuned. Michelle Fontaine for RVing Today TV. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River. Begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. Today's RVing Today Quick Stop is ideally located for RVers visiting historic Nevada City, California. Lots of trees and high mountain clean air are great ingredients for a campground, and the in-town campground is rich with the features that appeal to RVers. We spoke with Aaron Thiem, co-owner of the in-town campground, to learn more about the facility. 
Uh, welcome to the in-town campground. We're in downtown Nevada City, Northern California, and we have 70 different campsites here on site, 15 acres in the forested foothills. We offer tenting, glamping, and RV hookups. We've got something for everyone. We've got tent sites that are private. We've got sites that are great for couples, families, vans, teardrops rooftop tents and we've got glamping tents that are all set up and ready for you don't have to pack a thing just bring your toothbrush and then we have rv sites both full hookups and water and electric sites available for campers who want to come bring their rigs to nevada city uh, the in-town campground super family friendly we do outdoor movies for the kids on the weekends we have a swimming pool we have a camp store a communal kitchen the kitchen is great for either tenters rvers or glampers because it gives you that space outside of your campsite to use the oven use the refrigerator have a nice meal clean up and it's not in your space a lot of our campers really enjoy that um, and yeah we've been getting a lot of people on their shakedown maiden voyage so if you have a new a rig and you want to test it out and you don't want to go very far we tend to be a great destination for those campers as well access roads are well planned for easy rv maneuvering into and out of the sites Naturally, the campground store includes RVing necessities as well as snacks and souvenirs. Like many campgrounds, it's not a cheap place to stay. Our spot for our truck and Palomino camper was in the $75 neighborhood, which is becoming more common these days. Railroad history fans will enjoy the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum next door to the campground. For more information about the in-town campground, log on to our website at rvingtoday.tv. Want more RVing Today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Today I'm teaching you a cast iron Mediterranean chicken meal. This is something that's going to have your friends and families craving for seconds, so you better make extra. And I love to use chicken thighs when I'm cooking with cast iron, especially at the campground because it's dark meat. And if you cook it a little bit longer than you're supposed to, maybe you know, you've know you had an extra cocktail or maybe a kid's learning how to ride a bike. With dark meat, it's okay. You've got this window where it's still gonna be flavorful and tender and juicy. And what I wanna do is take some olive oil and just drizzle it over the top, maybe about a teaspoon per chicken thigh. Now just turn it over, rub each piece around in the olive oil because you want all the spices and seasonings to stick right on the skin and not get left all over the piece of parchment paper here. I've mixed up a seasoning blend with rosemary and dried lemon, oregano, salt, pepper, a little bit of red chili flake, and some garlic powder. Those great Mediterranean flavors. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. Now we're gonna flip these over because we want our chicken to be seasoned on both sides. We have our chicken seasoned and oiled. I have all of the vegetables all chopped and my fire, it's ready. So let's move on over there and get to cooking. Okay, so here I am over my hot, hot fire. Oh my goodness, this is screaming. And that's exactly how you need this fire to be. Have your tongs ready. 
Your chicken's already seasoned and we've got our olive oil. We're gonna add in about two tablespoons to it. It's already bubbling away. There we go. It's bubbling and sizzling away. We're gonna put the chicken in skin side down, place it in the oil and then bring it out to the side and just leave it alone. So I wanna let this go for about three minutes. I don't want to touch it. I want that skin to start to crisp and brown and then we're gonna turn it over and do the exact same thing on the other side, about three to five minutes. Okay, it's been about three minutes. All I can smell right now is olive oil and rosemary and oregano and pepper and that dried lemon peel. That's the trick here. You don't wanna add fresh lemon zest to this. You wanna add the dried because the fresh is gonna to have too much moisture in it and too many oils and those can burn. But with the dried lemon peel, it's perfect. Because remember, these are just seared. These are not cooked all the way, these chicken thighs. And I want to remove them and just set them aside for a few minutes. So now let's get ready to add in our onions. I have one chopped onion here, large chunks, nothing small. So I've got the onions going. Now it's time to add in the potatoes. Now remember, I've par cooked these. If you cook them to the point where they're just fork tender, take them out of the boiling water and let them cool. Then all you have to do is put them into a container or a zip top bag and get it into your freezer and then you can take it to the campground and they're practically cooked. It's a way of saving time. All right, next we're gonna add in our green beans. I love these, these are fresh. I picked them up at a farmer's market. Now let's add in a pinch of our seasoning because you want to season as you go. Let's add in two fresh sprigs of rosemary. It's totally optional. Well, I'm going to let this cook for about five minutes, and then we're going to add the chicken back in and a couple other ingredients and finish this dish. All right, let's add back in that chicken. Okay, let's just nestle that right in. Now, since we've already seared it, it only has about 20 minutes more to cook. So this is a meal that you can have ready in about 40, 45 minutes for your family. Now let's add in our other ingredients. I have some fresh tomatoes. These are whole little cherry tomatoes. I'm just gonna sprinkle these over the top. I've got some sliced and um, the pits have been removed from these Kalamata olives. I'm gonna sprinkle these over to the top. This is definitely a Mediterranean addition to your meal. And I have three cloves of garlic that I've chopped. Why am I adding it now and not at the beginning? Well, that olive oil was really hot in this pan and there was a chance that the garlic would burn and that would add a tremendous amount of bitter flavor. We don't want that. And I'm adding in about a half a cup of chicken stock. Now, if you wanna add some additional flavor, add in about a quarter cup of white wine and then a quarter cup of chicken stock or water. It's whatever you choose. And this will just help everything cook. All right, 10 minutes has passed. Everything is bubbling away. Let's give it a good stir and then we're gonna let it go another 10 minutes and then it's gonna be time to eat. I'm gonna add in some fresh chopped parsley just for a bright green flavor. And then to finish off that Mediterranean flavor, I'm gonna add in some feta cheese. Now you don't have to if you don't want to, but it just adds a really creamy texture and it's a little salty and it's just perfect. It gives it a nice pop with that bright white. I think it's fantastic. Let me cut off a little bit of this chicken here. It's so soft and tender. And remember that skin on top is nice and seared and it stayed beautiful and golden. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. The oregano, the rosemary, the chili flake, the pepper. I'm getting that saltiness from the olives. This is fantastic. I'm gonna try the olives and potatoes next. Okay. Mm. There's something about a Kalamata olive when you cook it with a dish like this, it still retains some of that texture bite that it has. It doesn't get soft 
and just kind of fade away. It, 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 it stays there. It's a great bite for you. Mm. I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling On TV. Thank you for joining me today for this cast iron Mediterranean chicken meal. Keep cooking great memories and I will see you at the campground. Bye. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.